Now we are going to be covering a wide range of topics here in today's video, but before we get into it, man, I have been seeing people making fake pages of me and trying to get y'all to go over to some Telegram chat. Listen, I do not have a Telegram. You'll never see me promoting a Telegram chat, all right? So don't get scammed. I'm not on Telegram. Don't get scammed in Telegram chats. Now starting out, we got EDD. All right, now this is a super, you know, old, super outdated one, but listen. One thing y'all gotta understand is a lot of these plays will leave, but they come back, right? They always come back, right? So EDD, EDD is one of those ones that, you know, it leaves, but it comes back, right? It's seasonal. Scammers hit EDD in winter time. They can get people's information, right? Their SSN, social security number, you know, tax returns or pay stubs, maybe, um, maybe a W-2 or maybe a bank receipt or uh, a business record, right? And they can essentially use this information to file unemployment, file for unemployment and receive payments in your name. Even if you have a job, right? I've seen people been employed the past four years, right? You get a good job. Maybe you're a bank teller you're making $22 an hour. You got full benefits. Someone can still file for unemployment in your name. So I just find that crazy, right? But that's why I always say you should keep your information super private, right? Always. Never share your information online too. That's another thing. A lot of people are so comfortable sharing their information online. So someone can file for unemployment, receive monthly payments in your name for disability or maybe a layoff, right? Whatever they decide to lie about. So be sure to keep your information safe, right? Next up, we got fake checks. Now, fake checks is cr a crazy one. Now, I'm not telling anyone to go out and do this. I was cashing checks for like 80, uh, for like 8,000, 9,000, trying to stay under the $10,000. And so at one point I get a check for like 29 grand and I think, man, this is ridiculous. It's gonna take another month. So I said, I'm gonna ca start cashing larger checks. Give them the cashier's check that had been issued by the title company. A lot, most of them were eight or 9,000, one was 29. So I go in, I say, hey, my name's Scott Cugno, I need to cash this check. They go, well, that's odd. You know, this is a cash transaction bank. You can give me that. Yeah, we do larger, okay, let me, let me just, let's talk to the manager. Manager comes out, he says, what's going on? I said, look, I, I need to cash the check. And he goes, okay. So he takes the check and my ID and my credit card and he leaves. And I remember Becky, the girl I was on the run with, she calls me up, she's calling, what are you doing? The guy's being a jerk, he's, he's waiting, he's doing verifications and stuff, I don't know. I go, look, if the cops show up outside, call me. Listen, it's all fraud and you can go to jail. So don't get any ideas. You know, these are federal crimes. And they, can, they carry heavy consequences if you're caught dropping fake checks in you know, someone's account or using an account, or opening up an account with a fake identity, shit like that, right? It's all fraud. And, you know, you can definitely go to jail for it. So you just want to learn the information, obtain the information. So that way you can be well informed and know what's going on. So don't be a dumbass out here, man. I think you can commit these crimes and get away with them. Listen, they're catching people all the time, all the time. Right. So and the scary part is, you know, the feds, they'll they'll sit back and watch you. Right? They'll just sit back and watch you commit fraud for years and years and years. Right. That way they can build an indictment around you and then, you know, try to put you in prison for the rest of your life. So be careful. Be thoughtful out here. Now, dropping fake checks. Right. There's multiple ways that people, you know, are creating fraudulent checks. They can make one using a template, editing software. They can steal one from the mail, right? There's a lot of mail services, a lot of mail carriers going around getting robbed nowadays, right? Because people are looking for checks. Then you have people who can get bank logs. Now, what is a bank log? Bank logs are, you know, essentially logging information to a bank account, right? Now, people can obtain these through credential stuffing, right? That's just one method. But there's plenty of other methods that people can use to obtain your banking login information. Then you also have, you know, more sophisticated scammers who can get into corporation and organization um, accounts that have literally hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of dollars sitting in them. So you have people who are opening up banking accounts, right, with fake identities and they're dropping fake checks in these accounts, overdrafting them as soon as it clears before the bank even notices that it's a fraudulent check. Because one thing that you have to understand is that most of the time when you deposit a check into your account, it clears instantly if it's a small check, right? But if it's a large check, it will partially clear instantly right then and there too. So a scammer can drop a fake check into a banking account for $10,000, right? Just for an example, probably, I say probably 50 to 75% of that check will clear right then and there, right? And they can go withdraw that before the bank even notices that it's a fraudulent check, right? Before the check even gets flagged within their system. Because another thing you have to understand is that, you know, some aspects of checks are federally regulated, right? Meaning that it takes two to three business days for it to clear. Other aspects of checks are all up to the financial institution in which it's being deposited into, right? So that can clear instantly, but it all really just depends on the two financial institutions that are, you know, involved in the transaction. One thing you got to understand is there's a lot of people out here that have their own business, right? And they have people on payroll and they got to pay them with a check, right? So creating checks isn't inherently illegal. It's only once you start doing illegal things with these checks 
that you can face, you know, legal repercussions. So with that being said, people are essentially able to buy checks and they're essentially able to generate their own money. So basically you got people who are going around, you know, finding people with bank accounts, then you got other people who are going around finding people with checks. And what they'll do is they'll merge the two, right? So they'll tell the person, hey, you know, I can make you some money. And they'll usually pull up on them in a nice car, right? They'll, and usually they'll, they'll scope the person out for a while, right? So they'll find somebody that works at a gas station or something, right? And they'll pull up on, on a nice car. They see the overall vision, right? They see how their life can progress and how they can, you know, eventually be riding in a car like that. You give them the overall vision. And you can basically just tell them how you could take them to the next level. You show them the vision, you show them the car, the, the lifestyle, right? And, they, and that's how people are basically falling for this scam. But it's not even really a scam because they are getting money. They're just, these scammers are using their banking accounts to essentially scam the banks. And they're paying these people that are letting them use their account. So they can tell them, you know, we can drop this fake check in your account. And once we withdraw, we could just basically split the money. And afterwards, you just report it and get the money back from your financial institution. That way you never take a loss. Initially hearing this, especially when you're broke, you know, and down on your luck, you know, it's very easily, it's very easy to fall for something like this. It's very easy to get wrapped up and something like this. So when people are working these, you know, nine to five jobs where they're only getting paid $15 an hour, you know, only going home with what, not even a thousand dollars a week. It's very easy for them to get wrapped up in things like this. this is basically what I'm trying to say. It's very easy for them to, you know, see the lifestyle, see the overall vision. And, you know, they see how their life can progress like that. And they want to start, you know, committing check fraud too. So that is how scammers, you know, get into people's heads. So, you know, they can get them to do what they want them to do. But yeah, man, that is how people are profiting from fake checks. And, you, you know, you even have people who are doing this with no help from anyone else at all. You literally have people who are sitting in their penthouse on a laptop making $100,000 a month. And what they're doing is they are stealing identities. That way they can go open up a bank account, drop fake checks in the bank account through, you know, the uh, check deposit feature. You know, a lot of banking account apps offer check deposit features, right? So that way you could deposit the check right there through the app. You don't gotta go to an ATM, you don't gotta go to an institution. So that's the crazy part. This all can be done online. The scammers never have to show their face. So to open up this banking account, right? First, they'll steal the identity. Steal the identity, then open up the banking account with the stolen identity, drop the fake check in the account, and then sell themselves the money. They're just sitting in their penthouse, sending themselves Zelle payments all day, which obviously is gonna leave you know a huge paper trail right back to the scammer. So what they'll do is they'll incorporate a few other methods to you know wipe that wipe the paper trail completely clean. So that is what people are doing to commit check fraud, right? And another thing too, the full amount of the check is not going to clear, right? Only a percentage will clear before the check gets flagged by the financial institution. So what people are doing is they're using a mixture of isopropyl alcohol and acetone. And what this mixture does is it can essentially erase ink from paper right you can take ink off paper very easily so after stealing a check they will use this method a scammer can use this method to get ink off the check that way they can then add in their own custom amount their own information their own details you know in you know hit for a little more than what than what was initially written out now as far as sending yourself zell payments all day right which is super dumb because it leaves a massive paper trail but, but this is what this is literally what people have done in the past. You know, you're better off just hitting the ATMs. You're better off waiting for the check to clear, hitting ATMs. But these are basically, you know, just little ways, little methods that people are using to finesse, you know, get over on these systems, get over on these financial institutions. They're fucking the banks over, right? That's really the only people who are losing in these situations, right? Because the, the person who owns the bank account, they're getting the money back, plus they're getting paid from the scammer for being able to use their account to hit, the, to hit for these fake checks. So they're profiting, they're eating, scammers eating. The only person that's losing is the financial institutions. But like I said, man, these are methods, these are ways people are finessing out here, getting over on these banks. And these are also, you know, ways people are getting indicted, they're getting caught up. You know, it's very easy to get caught when doing these scams, you know, it's very easy to get caught. It's hard to get away with it. That's one thing you gotta understand. Because one slip up, one slip up is all it takes to get caught. So you gotta understand that too. So I don't recommend scamming. It is bad, it's very bad. You can definitely go to jail for it.